It's uh, Wednesday, the 13th of October. I'm gonna go get a bullet for the Falcon. It's a stock bottom end deal that we're gonna split in half. So my friend Jason and I drove to Ramona, California to get what we thought was a 302 out of a 90s Mustang. y'all it's the next day uh, me and my homie jason went and picked that engine up i don't think it's out of a mustang i think it's out of a truck or an explorer so i'm gonna unload it right now and then uh we're gonna run out to kelly black gt's house check out his new shop and then we'll come back i think i'm gonna crack the heads off this deal and uh see if it's got um, valve reliefs in the pistons and when i get it out of the truck i'll do a little walking around of it but um yeah my goal for the falcons to go fast but just for some youtube content and for some of the ford people out there we're gonna do um heads cam intake turbo in a falcon at first with this stock bottom end deal and just see how much power it'll take till it breaks so that I mean, there's so many uh people out there that have all these misconceptions about these engines and what cam they should run in heads and so we're just going to be do like a simple thing for you guys so you know and see what happens. Right, so I don't know what this is out of. You see the exhaust manifolds. I'm not sure what kind of car that came off of. Got dual pulleys here. This is a large 
fan pulley and obviously this is a clutch fan so not something that was on a mustang like that anyways water neck's wrong bitch i don't know i don't even think this intake came off this engine uh non-cobra or g240 heads stamped valve covers which i know were on 94 95s but i don't know still has ford exhaust gasket there so i really couldn't tell you what this came out of but we'll get on the engine stand and crack the heads off and see if it's got notches in the piston all right everybody um went and checked out kelly's shop and then came back and blew this deal apart i don't think that's the intake that came off the engine could be i don't know i don't think it is and this definitely did not come out of a mustang sorry i didn't film taking it apart but kind of in a hurry but it is a roller block but it's got these dish pistons so i'm not sure if the camo i was just going to do like an n41 um you know whatever cheapy aluminum heads i could get a hold of in a turbo so i'm not sure if i'm gonna i'll probably just leave these pistons um this guy said this thing had 89,000. highly doubt that i can feel a little little groove from when the piston changes the directions right there um so i may re-bearing re and re-ring this deal just run a home through it and put new bearings and maybe file the rings and put a little ring gap or i may get a set of pistons from tony av boys stock pistons forged pistons out of a mustang uh, let me know what you think i'm kind of doing this for the people that are like on a budget like what can you get out of one of these things if you put a cam and turbo it you know so let me know what um what you guys think what what should i do you know should i just pull it apart put some bearings and rings in it and then ultimately it'll go in the falcon for the first the first rendition um or do you want me to change it to the other pistons it's kind of just doing this for the youtube people um I noticed that number five hole looks like it might have been leaking seep in the head gasket. Like that piston's really clean versus all the other ones. And it looks like maybe right here it was seeping. It doesn't matter either way to me. I think it'll make enough power to break itself with these cast pistons or whatever the heck these things are. Um, I still think it'll make enough power to split the block in half. But um that's it that's that's what i'm gonna put in the falcon for their first go around obviously quite a ways to go i need to weld up all the holes car needs to get sandblasted i know you guys have heard that already a hundred times but um you know projects come in and you know sometimes those take priority i can get going on the falcon and get the rest of the body filler off of it and get all the holes welded up before it goes to sandblast and we've kind of been talking about maybe getting the cage in it before we send it to sandblast too but i don't know if that i don't know if that's going to happen or not it may get sandblasted before just because i don't know i think it might be easier i don't know we'll figure it out okay so after getting that engine apart uh obviously we started doing stuff with the vega and the Falcon and all that stuff kind of got pushed to the wayside. However, during that time, um, I was made aware of a company called Speed Kinetics and a guy named Matt. And basically, he makes K-members for the bigger body Fords like Fairlanes, but um, was interested in making one for the smaller cars like the Falcon and the early Mustangs. So I had already purchased an AJE K-member and was going to use that with some... Uh, uh either team z arms or racecraft arms i just wanted their k member which is a mild steel k member and and uh not the best so this video kind of skips ahead to where um i have some conversations with matt and we decided to get the car out to him
Well, good morning, everybody. Today, um, kind of out of the order of, out of the process of, got stuff on my face. Kind of out of the order of things I'm doing to the Falcon, but Matt at Speed Kinetics hit me up. Um, I shared his stuff on Instagram. He makes K members for early Fords. Uh, his stuff is a lot better quality than AJE. Uh, number one, it's chromoly, and number two, it's all TIG welded. Um, a lot better than the, the AJE setup. So he hit me up. He doesn't make one currently for the earlier Fords. So like my Falcon and the earlier Mustangs are very similar. The K member anyways, uh, where the frame rails are and all that. So I am going to today um, get the wheels off of the Ranchero. I initially was going to take the Ranchero and let him build the K member off of that and just leave the Falcon here. But he's gonna weld tops onto my shock towers and set it up for caster camber plates and all that stuff. So it just made sense to me to throw the wheels on the Falcon and drag the Falcon out there. There's no motor trans in this thing. Still has the rear end in it. And um, that way, that, that deal's kind of done with. And then uh, I can get it back and continue on the route that I was gonna go. So today I got a couple of weld wheels that I'm, I'm gonna send because when this is done, it'll have, uh, I think I'm going to use the SN95 spindles. Reason being is I think they're a little bit better than the Fox setup. And they're only going to push the wheels out 3 16 of an inch, which really isn't much. Um, and I think he's making control arms anyways. So um, I do have to hang the fenders, but I'm only going to do that with a couple of bolts. All of this stuff is going to come off, all of this. Um, that all gets gets gone, um, all of that. Uh, I'm not sure if he's gonna cut all the stuff out or I can do that when I get the car back, but all of that stuff comes out. Um, here's the AJE K member, I've already purchased it. And I was gonna use like some Team Z or some Racecraft control arms, some Chrome Ollie control arms. So I'll be putting this thing up for sale just because the goal of this car is I'm trying to make it as light as I can. I want to have to put weight into it to make weight for drag week and race week rather than being overweight. And I have, the car needs to weigh 3,000 pounds for those deals. So if I can get the car to weigh around 2,500 without me in it and then get me in it, um, that's kind of the goal is get the car as light as I can. So today, <clears throat> um, need to run to the tire store. Tim has a set of welds that we got at Pomona Swap Meet a couple years back. And for whatever reason, they don't hold air. So I'm gonna run them over to the tire store and make sure um, it's not the valve stem seals that are leaking, have them throw them in water. And if they freaking need tubes or whatever, I'll do that just so that when Matt's done, uh, the car can roll and I can get the Falcon back on the trailer and get, get it home. It's still gonna go get sandblasted. So pretty much anything that Matt does when he's done, I'm gonna disassemble it. Um, I need, I've never set a, an engine up with a motor plate. So I think what I'm gonna have him do is the stands that come up um, and I'll put a picture so you can see what his K member looks like. But the stands that come up for the um, engine mounts, I think I'm just going to have him tack those because this car's going to have a mid and a motor plate. And uh, so I'll have him tack that stuff in um, and then maybe have either Tony or Kelly help me get the block set up in the, in the engine bay with motor plates. And then I can uh, basically like cut those pieces off since I won't need them. Um, there's like no room in this engine bay to do what I'm trying to do as far as like turbo. So um, the goal was to front half the car, which I think may be easier once Matt's done, but I really want to lose basically everything from the firewall forward. And uh, I'll drop another picture here of kind of how I want it to look, um, just so that it's easy for me to get to stuff. You know, when you're doing drag week, type stuff 
you may get delayed on the trip to the track and when you got to change the car over or if you have a problem it's so much easier when you can get the stuff and you're not uh struggling with shock towers and stuff like that to get the plug so i still this goal is still to front half the car but to be quite honest once i get the car back from matt and we get a a mid plate or an engine plate in I'll, i can kind of have an idea if i need to uh come all the way from when the roll cage is in with a bar into the engine bay or if i can just cut it off uh, right here just cut all this and kind of lose all of this front stuff here off of the car that'll give me a lot of room uh, i had intended for the turbo to kind of be sitting over here and then just a short intake pipe into the intake i'm gonna have a intercooler that sits on the intake to me that makes the most sense yeah it's probably cheaper to put a intercooler out here just an air to air but i got things in my head that i think are going to work better <laughs> especially for a drag and drive car uh if you're just making a 660 foot hit and then shut the thing off and tow it back maybe the air to air is better but um for what i'm trying to do i think the intercooler on top of the intake is better so follow along today um probably will be so a fair amount of time lapses but uh, it's about 8 30 i'm just eating breakfast didn't quite get up as early as I wanted to, but uh, yesterday was a long day for me at work. I had to be there early, and uh, so needless to say, this morning I was I was tired and I wasn't trying to wake up. All right, we're over here at the tire store. They said they think the valve stem seals are probably the problem, the culprit. They're metal and the O-rings go bad, so we'll see what happens. So he got the tire off, he says the bead looks dirty. So he's gonna clean up the bead and thinks that'll do it, so maybe. All right, we got the Fox out of the garage. Now we need to get the, I only have one set of rollers for these old Fords, so I've gotta get, this thing up on jack stands, get the rollers off of this deal. And then uh, get them on the Falcon and get the Falcon back on the ground. Get all the stuff out of the Falcon. And, you know, all the stuff off the top and inside. Get that going. <laughs> All right, we are loaded up and ready to go. Damn, that thing's sexy. Ready? 
ready to go, Jay? Mm -hmm. Jay made it and we dropped the talking off here with Matt at Speed Kinetics and this is what his cape member looks like all chromoly TIG welded uses the mount for the where the steering would go and the pitman arm nice stuff so that's what he's gonna do to yeah, do the same to the falcon here so we're just comparing the aje stuff here all right so me and jason hung out with matt for a while and uh shot the shit with him um unfortunately i didn't film anything other than what you saw here but uh we bs for a little while and then we headed home and i needed some more parts that i had to order and so i made a trip back with some of this stuff here Get out of here. There's shit in here. You don't need to get a hold of. Come on. Outside. Your butt outside. Alrighty, so got my lawns mowed and got some parts that I need to take out to Matt at Speed Kinetics. Just got my hair cut, got that mop all cut off. But we gotta go over to uh Pick up some parts from Tony and Tess. I had them order some Team Z stuff for me. So we're gonna go pick that up and then we'll grab Tim and run out to Matt's and we're gonna drop off the uh, rack and pinion, the 
bump steer kit and the uh, what do you call it? Caster camber plates. So we're gonna use caster camber plates like off of a Fox body. So we're gonna run all that out there so that he can get my car finished up and we will take you along. Parts, please. <laughs> How are you? Good, how are you? Dang, it seems like a little box. So we open it up. Heavy little box. All right, we got our parts, but we only got caster camber plates. The uh, bump steer kit, I guess, is back order or something. It says it'll ship at a later date. So I'm not going to be able to give that to Matt, but maybe I can have it shipped over to him that way i don't have to keep driving out to his house but um that's cool at least he can get you know at least he can get going on the stuff that i'm gonna bring to him well here's the parts we're taking him at these are some uh chinese wheels and we're gonna get the welds back in case tim needs them caster camera from team z uh struts from the gray mare and then look at this freaking flaming river rack this thing's brand new um kind of a shitty piece the chinese one i bought for the fox body was better than this but they said this is made in argentina not the united states so uh, i don't know 